directing and Thank you to anyone and associates, my partner at Cat Babies Project Community. The great building was less than eight blocks from the scene of the hit and run accident, 10.46 a.m. It was a new high-rise office building. Fillmore had an office on the 28th floor. We're police officers. We'd like to see Clayton Fillmore. One moment. There are two policemen here to see you. Go right in, please. Thank you, miss. Well, please, thank you. Coincidence usually comes now by attorney Paul Baker. My name's Friday. This is Bill Gale. My car is parked in the garage of this building on the second level, space 36. My attorney tells me you'll probably impound it as evidence. Further advises me to make no additional statement. That's correct, Paul. That's right. I've informed my client of his constitutional rights. Please state the charge. All right, sir. Mr. Fillmore. You're under arrest for 20,001 B.C., hit one felony, and 192.38 B.C., felony manslaughter. All right. Suppose we have to go downtown, huh? Yes, sir. Uh, Marjorie, cancel my appointments for the rest of the day. Yes, sir. Anything else? Uh, you might call my wife and tell her I won't be home for dinner. We checked Clayton Fillmore's car. It was a blue 64 Lincoln sedan. We made arrangements to have it towed into the Central Property Impound Garage. Fillmore would be booked on two counts of hit and run felony and two counts of felony manslaughter. How much longer is this going to take, Paul? We should have you out on bail in time for lunch. Fine. All right, Sergeant, try to lead the way. I don't look so hanged, dog. How old did you say those two were that you say I hit? The woman was 67. The man was 73. Well, I'm sorry, but. It isn't as if they were going to live much longer anyway. Isn't that right? I suggest you don't say anything more, Clay. But it's true. I am sorry. Yeah, well, sorry we'll bring him back, Goldman. A dedicated cop. Uh, you have a right to remain silent, Clay. I thought you'd do so. There's no rule against him listening. Depends on what you say to him, Sergeant. Yeah, well, I'll try to be careful. Fillmore, maybe as far as you're concerned, those two people lived all the life you figured they should, but what gives you the right to end it for them? It doesn't really bother you, does it? You were in a 30-mile zone. You were doing 50, maybe 55 miles an hour. Those two people you hit were not 77 feet 6 inches down the street from the point of impact. <clears throat> Drink this time, too. This isn't the first time for you. You've got a drunk driving record that goes back to your high school days. Every time you've beaten it, haven't you? Down the hall, there's traffic enforcement division. They've got good laws, and they try to enforce them, but they've got an impossible job. There are 130 miles of freeway in this city. Better than 6,000 miles of surface streets. Every 10 minutes, there's an accident. Every 10 minutes, somebody like you tries to kill himself or somebody else. You blew 20 minutes of that time all by yourself. Mister, you killed two human beings. Two people who are alive and breathing seconds before you ran them down. And you've got the monumental gall to stand here and say they wouldn't have lived much longer. You may be out of bed in a couple hours and so you take this to lunch with you. Two people are lying over there in the county morgue and you put them there. You were in a hurry the night you killed them. You're in a hurry now to see how fast you can forget. I don't wish you a lot of luck. I hope it takes the rest of your life. Now have a good lunch.
I'm trying to tell him.